Bible, Jesus Christ said, except it be for the cause of fornication, that if you, if you put away a woman and you marry another, that you're committing adultery. Right. It's what the Bible says. It's what the Bible teaches. And yeah, I know, today it's offensive. It was offensive back then too. And in fact, John the Baptist was beheaded for it. Herod didn't like that. But you know what? He didn't, he didn't hold back and say, well, I mean, Herod's done this. I, I better not say anything about it because I might get in trouble. That's not, what, what did you go out in the wilderness for to see? Someone who's just going to lay down and, and not preach the truth? Well, hopefully, you know, when you come here, you're going to hear from a lot of people, a lot of Baptists. Amen. None of them made John, John, but, you know, we've got, well, there is one. We have, is there, <laughs> sorry, Jonathan. I think it's John, Jonathan, right? It's not J-O-H-N, though, so we don't have a John. We've got, we've got Jonathan the Baptist. We've got Aaron the Baptist. Right? We've got Ed the Baptist. We've got Stephen the Baptist. We're going to have Roger the Baptist. Jason. Jason the Baptist. Thank you. I'm like, I know there's one more and my brain's dead. <laughs> and I'm a Baptist. Right. And what did you come out here to hear? Hopefully you came out here to hear the Word of God. Hopefully you came out here to hear from people who are not going to back down. Hopefully you came out here to hear from people who are willing to, to preach the Word of God and not just be some reed shaken in the wind. But what happens is people get offended. Look what Jesus said in verse 23. He said, Blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. You ought not to be offended by the word of God. You know, fundamental Baptist preaching is often referred to as hellfire damnation preaching. Right? You know what I say? Amen. You say, why do you rip on say why why do you always gotta be harping on say why do you gotta be yelling and screaming? Why? Because the Word of God is important and because, you know, people, all of us, me included, need to sit down sometimes and just hear the Word of God Amen. thundered forth and just be told, hey, thus saith the Lord. Amen. And someone, you know, we all need to be set straight from time to time. And you're going to need someone who's not going to beat around the bush, who's not going to be kind of blown around in the wind. And you're going, well, what is he really saying? I don't know. It just sounds like everything's kind of okay. You need someone who's just going to take the Word of God and say, look, this is what the Bible says. Adultery is a sin. Remarriage from, from divorce is a sin. You know, all these various things are sins, and, and you ought not to do them. Turn, if you would, to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew 16 we, we get a good picture of who these, what, what Bible-type preachers were like. We get a good picture of what Jesus Christ himself was like based on the testimony of others, even people who weren't his followers. There's a testimony of Jesus Christ and how men of God were in, in Bible days. We saw, you know, John the Baptist wasn't, he, he wasn't just dressed gorgeously. He wasn't, he wasn't backing down. He had a backbone. He had a spine. He was willing to say the things that need to be said regardless of how it was received. And go ahead and go through all the prophets. Read your book. Read the Old Testament. Read these preachers that would preach the word of God. Read about Jeremiah. Read how, read how he was you know, lowered down into the dungeon because of what he preached. Read about Ezekiel. Read about, you know, Isaiah and Elijah and Elisha. And, and you can see all of the trouble and persecution that they faced. But you know what? They never backed down. Right. None of them did. They never did. They always preached the truth. They always preached what God told them to say. You don't need someone tickling your ears today. You need someone preaching your ear the word of God. Matthew 16, look at verse number 13 and 14. The Bible reads, When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So he's basically saying, What are people saying about me? Who do people think I am? And their response was this, And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist. So right there we see that Jesus was a preacher like John the Baptist. People were confusing him, thinking that, Oh, this is John. Because Jesus started his ministry basically as John was ending his ministry. So they're thinking, well, John was beheaded. Maybe this is like a reincarnation of John the Baptist. And they says, uh, some Elias, which would be like Elijah. 
and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. So they're saying to Jesus, man, he's just like some of these real hardcore preachers from the Bible. This is who Jesus was. And, you know, one of the things that John the Baptist, what did he preach? Repent. Repent. And you know what? For people, repent isn't a very positive message because it's telling you to turn to change. Now, look, let's make this real clear. And I know all of you here, as far as I know, believe right about this. When John the Baptist was preaching repent when it comes to salvation, he was pointing people to the Lord Jesus Christ. He wasn't telling them you got to give up all of your sins in order to be saved. John the Baptist was telling people repent. Why? Because they weren't putting their faith in Christ. Their faith was in whatever. It was anything but Jesus Christ. They had their faith in the law of Moses. They had their faith, which wasn't really the law of Moses. I mean, they didn't really understand the word of God. They had their faith in any other religion. They had their faith in themselves. They had their faith in how good they were, their own obedience to the law. But they didn't have their faith in, in the Savior. Yeah, that's right. So they needed to change. They needed to repent. They needed to put their faith on Christ. But you know what? He wasn't just preaching that. I'm sure he was preaching a lot of other sermons about repentance. And look, we all ought to be repenting daily. You need to change. You need to get the sin out of your life. Whatever sins you got, you know, whatever bad doctrine you got, whatever bad beliefs you got, you got you to change. We got to get it right with God. You got to repent. And that's not going to be received well. But this is how Bible preachers do it. 